Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some well, fun. Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got a pretty interesting little job here. Well, it might be more than a little job. It could be uh, some fairly complicated maneuvers that we're going to have to make. But in stature, it is fairly small. Uh, let me get the bolts out of here. Basically, we're going to take and replace this piece here. Now, the complicated part is not so much replacing it because we're going to get a piece of plate steel and uh, and weld a, a shaft to it, and you know, it pretty straightforward. But the complicated part is it's got to go in that spline. And I don't know if you can see that pr from there, but probably you can. So uh, we have to figure out the spline sizes and see how we're going to actually cut that spline. And uh, the whole thing is going to be in, uh, I'm not sure, either 4140 or, well, probably 4140 because you don't have to uh, um, normalize the metal. Um, so... Uh, First thing uh, out, we're going to figure out what the spline is because I may have to buy a cutter to fit the spline. So, uh, hang in there, we're going to have some fun. Well, I kind of forgot to mention, uh, this guy uh, is building a car for Bonneville. Now, it isn't one of your 400 mile an hour cars because, you know, those guys are on a whole different class, but this guy travels a lot slower uh, with a three-cylinder engine. And uh, so uh, I'm making this spline for him, and uh, we're going to just go from there. We've got a little bit of modeling clay that we're going to jam into that hole and see if we can get some kind of a mold that will give us more of an idea of what these of what this uh, spline looks like because it's entirely possible I'm going to have to buy a uh, gear cutter I mean it looks to me like a standard gear now, whether that's the case or not, I don't know. But we're going to hope that it is. Let's see if we can get this thing. That looks pretty good. Not quite ready to slide in there, though. Knife. Hey, if you've been following along the bullet roach clips, <laughs> they're pretty much hanging around every once in a while. I'll run across one or two. I put them on a key ring or something like that. Okay, let's see if that'll go. Almost. We might be able to just push it in. But the first thing we want to do is get rid of excess so we don't get caught in there. That should do it. Okay, let's just see if we can kind of slide it in okay and now we're just gonna push down and hopefully we get a nice a nice shape
pretty good. Oh yeah, it's real good in here. All right, that's going to be it. So let's just take and cut this part off. And we've got our shape. Pretty much. Let me go over and get a gauge and see if we can figure out what we've got here. Okay. That looks pretty close. I'm thinking it's a 16. Is this, uh, that's at 20 degrees, and this is probably smaller than 20. I'm thinking 16 is it. Let's see what it looks like. I might have a 16. I'll be back. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> it turns out that the splines are 16 splines, which is great because it's divided by uh, 360 is 22 and a half degrees, which means I can use the super spacer. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have to do a bunch of setup which is great uh, but I'm still gonna do a test run first I've got a piece of center ground uh, rod that I use for my testing we're gonna put it in the chuck and see how close we are to um, to something usable and but this chuck is is uh, adjustable too so that should be it shouldn't be a problem all right we got that we're going to take that bit out put our indicator in place bring that in center on the shaft and that looks like center right about there now let's take it right up to this edge here bring it around to zero And see what we come up with. Well, I'd say in about a foot, we're off by not even a tenth. So that's good that way. Let's take it up and do do it from the top can we get it out here let's see if we can
Now we're going to hit the camera. something going here. Come on. What's giving up? I'll tell you, I've grown to despise these cheap little uh, indicator holders. Because one thing or another doesn't work. Okay, that's good. Now, in and out until we hit, see what we got uh, vertically. It's went, it's went thin too, but it also that's interesting within two. Let's bring it back. Again here. Take it over to zero. And really run it. Officially. So we're about three thousandths off, but it could have jumped right off the gate. definitely out by three so that probably means that the um, the uh, radius is okay out. well uh, you know I was gonna do it this other way it was kind of a fake it way and uh, I thought you know why not do it correctly <laughs> what a novel concept well you know it's it's going to take a whole lot more steps and I'm going to be in territory I have no idea what I'm doing uh, if I make it you're going to see this video if I fail probably this video goes out the window uh, but we're going to try to make a uh, a um, cutter for well it would be for gears but in this case it's for a spline and it, a, a spline that looks very much like a gear so uh, let's go down to the uh, paperwork and see what we've got and see what we can come up with um, and what I had planned on doing and and he was totally fine with this uh, you know again he's not a, a 400 mile per hour racer uh, he's more in the smaller divisions or the less uh, speedy division so he wasn't real concerned with that and my, my intention was to come in and cut 
a with a saw blade cut this uh, section here out let me get something I can point with so uh, um, my the intent is to cut this part out this needs to be well actually <laughs> no the other way that I was going to do it which was with the saw blade is to come down with that straight angle and cut that and then cut this and then come straight in with a uh, saw blade that's 50 thousandths wide and cut that little flat at the bottom and you can see that looks very much like a gear but I'm you know thinking about it and I get to the point to where I'm really thinking about cutting that and I'm thinking well okay so how about if we come in and I'm gonna just take a pen here we come in and we make a bit that goes off in this direction and this is our our um, mill bit right not right <laughs> see I'm confused this will be the lathe bit and it will go in no this is the finished uh, a mill bit or or gear cutter and I cut myself a piece of blank here and I went back into my uh, exotic metal stash and I have no idea what this stuff is but later on I'm going to show you the the uh, the scrap that comes off of this and this stuff is hard ass stuff I mean I burned a drill bit out just trying to drill a hole through this um, and uh, you know I could only use uh, inserts in order to cut it so it's some pretty hard stuff to start with and this will be our our um, gear cutter and so what I have to do is I need to end up with on the gear cutter this shape right this is a little uh, fuzzy so I came back in and I took some much more careful photos and I ended up with a pretty good representation of what I want now I'm noticing that it, you know it comes in so close let's get you centered here whoops not that centered there we go boy it's still moving okay uh, the camera came in so close that it measured I mean we've got a really nice arc right here and I'll take be able to take a measurement from it but this side here is worn and you can see that there's it, it, it you know it's a little jumpy and the same on this side a little jumpy so this is the wear side this is the original right, side well, <clears throat> here's the spline itself now the problem is is uh, getting any kind of measurement device down in there to to measure it now lucky for me my customer being the uh, <laughs> trying to figure it out on his own came in came up with this great idea he took and filled the interior the the back part of this with uh, clay and then he jammed in a bunch of JB weld and this thing is snug I mean it is tight of course it's not centered but it is does give me the exact shape of what I need to end up with well thank you thank him for that because now I've got something to measure against okay so we've got this in the chuck 
we're going to see if we can square it up a bit. Notice how far out it is. And I think the threads are running fairly true. So let's just come in and see if we can straighten this thing out a bit so that we can get a good clean running surface at the front of those threads or of those teeth. It jumps up and down, but all we want to do is face this until we get a good clean edge. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. Yeah, we got some good clean edges to work from now. All right, we'll go back over there and take Well, I eat. forgot to turn the camera on. We've got this thing about half cut. So the way I can tell that this disc was some hard-ass metal is by the shavings. And, you know, I had to take this off at fairly thin runs per cut. Uh, and it would just barely peel it off. So uh, we got some tough-ass stuff there. Uh, and then, of course, once we uh, case harden it, it'll even be tougher. So right now we're going to kind of come up here and uh, we're going to make a um, a mandrel so that we can put this on and machine it down. So uh, let's get started. And all we really need is uh, what this 3 8 of an inch. And I think what I want to do is make it just slightly undercut so that we put a bolt in the end of this and tighten it up and it'll be good. So uh, we're going to take it down to within about, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 thousandths of, of the finished diameter, then take it off and uh, put a keyway slot in here and then come back and finish up the diameter with the keyway slot and uh, drill a hole and tap it and get, you know, everything all set. All right, we're down to 140 thousandths. That's pretty good. We're within of that small amount, and we've got a bit of a shoulder there. So that's exactly what we want. Now let's take it over to the mill, and we're going to run a a uh, slot in there, and we'll go from there. Okay, we've got our little vise set up. We've got uh, it trammed in. And uh, now what we're doing is we're bringing the uh, cutter head down to the level of the 
of the steel and we're zeroing out the my little DRO there we'll take it all the way to the bottom come back in and come back up and we've got one inch twenty nine thousandths is that what's one inch two hundred ninety six thousandths so one inch two hundred ninety six divide that by two six hundred and forty eight so and if we come up to six hundred and forty eight six forty seven five I can live with and that's hitting dead center So we want to, we don't want to climb cut, so we're going to cut it from the back side. Alright, let's see what that looks like depth wise. Um hmm. Thinking maybe just a little bit deeper. Let's try it again. good okay so nice now tip back over to the lathe bring this down to size drill a hole in it put a and tap it and then put a bolt and a washer on that and I think we're set. Okay, we got her centered up and ready to rip. Let's get the camera a little more centered. And we're gonna take this down to one inch exactly. And I know we had a good 40 thousandths or so. Well, we can't even measure it. Okay. About a half under, about a half under uh, size. So I think we're going to be just about right. Let me go. Far. There it is. Pretty tight. I mean, it's a good slip fit. I like it. All right, so now we need to uh, make our hole and put a bolt and a washer on that. Uh, let's get ourselves a bolt first. 
All right, we're going to put a hole in that and uh, drill it out to number seven, and then uh, and then tap it. <laughs> All right, well, I tapped it for a quarter inch, and I think I have a 5 16 bolt. <laughs> uh, let me go get a quarter inch. Okay, so we've got our, our uh, mandrel ready. We're going to put in our piece of... Almost. Okay, looks like we're sitting just a bit long. Let's see how our disc goes. Beautiful. And this, this can just tap in just a little bit more. Perfect. All right, we've got this. And we've got our screw. Okay, good and tight. <laughs> 